What we're going to be looking at here is a long-term liability and specifically looking at a bond issued using this effective interest method for amortization of the bond. And the bond is going to be issued at a premium here. So for example here, Corporation A issues $800,000 worth of bonds here at 10% and they're going to be 20-year bonds uh, and they issue them here on 1-1-20-X-1, January 1st to the 20-X-1 here at 102. So what does that mean here? They issue them at 102% here of the power or the face value. So they're going to be issued here at 102% of this $800,000 worth of bonds. Now the interest is payable semi-annual here annually here on 1-1 and 7-1 each year here for the next 20 years. Now Corporation A uses this effective interest method for amortization of the bond either a premium or a discount. But what we're going to be looking at is a premium here because uh, well, let what we have to do is we have to set up this amortization schedule here and it's it's going to be based on this effective interest uh, rate here that we have to determine. And we're going to determine that using e either a um, calculator, a financial calculator, or I'm going to use the Excel function in this case. So what we have to start out with here is the carrying amount of the bond. Well, remember it was issued at a 102 or 102 percent and the face value or the par value was 800,000 for the bonds that were issued here. So 102 percent times that. We're going to get a beginning carrying value of this bond at $816,000 for this group of bonds here. And what we have to do here is we have to set up this our amortization schedule here and the key is to come up with the effective interest rate here. Well, what is that here? That's the effective interest rate that would be uh, used here to amortize this bond down from $816,000 down to $800,000 over these 40 periods or these semi-annual periods here. So this is so what we're, we'll go through the mechanics up here once we determine what this effective interest rate is. So let's go down here and look at that here. So calculating the effective yield interest rate here and I'm going to use the Excel function here or you can use a financial calculator here. All right so let's work we'll just work with this yield function here. So we have to determine the settlement date that's the date that we actually buy or sell this bond at and then the maturity date that's how many years out in this case it was 20 years out and the rate here well we knew that face value of the rate on this bond we have here at 10 percent here and then what we have to do, this is the key here, we have to determine the purchase price and the redemption price here based on uh, some ratio here and we, they do it in terms of a hundred here when you're using these uh, financial calculators or the Excel function and then we know what the frequency is here. It's paid out semi-annually here. Okay, so let's go down and we're going to come up with this percentage here, the effective interest rate percentage. So the key here is um, coming up with this ratio here. So what you have here is the uh, $816,000 issue price here and then we know what the par or face value is $800,000 here so you divide that out and you're going to come up with this ratio 1.02 so you have to when you're using these financial functions this is the key here you have to come up with it in terms of unity or here of one and again we could look at it here just by taking just to prove it out here 102,000 divided by 100,000 again 102 here so okay so that's what we have to plug into our function here so uh, instead of the 860 16,000 we have to use this ratio here so uh, at 102 here or it could be some decimal point of it here but I'm just rounding it off so if it was 816,500 it would be 102.5 okay so let's go on here so you plug this in that's with the purchase price here at 102 that represents the 816,000 and then the redemption here that's the um, face value here and that represents it by 100 plug it in you're going to come up with 9.7705% and it's important that you carry them out here to these um, significant decimal points here in this case it's four decimal points because we're dealing with a small uh, number here and we have to amortize it over these 40 periods so what we would do for and then because it's paid semi-annually you just take the uh, to determine your effective interest rate on a semi-annual basis just take the 9.7705 divided by 2 and you're going to come up with four points 0.8853. So that's our effective interest rate here. Now remember here, use either your financial calculator here or in this case I'm using the Excel function here. Okay, so let's go up to our amortization schedule. So now this is how we'd amortize this. Uh, in this case it's going to be at this premium that we have to amortize uh, over this 
a 20 year life of this bond here. So the 18,000, 800, $816,000 has to be amortized down. And if we're going to, this the $16,000 premium has to be amortized down here on this bond. Okay, so this is how we do that. We start out, we had our carrying amount here of $816,000. Now we take it times this effective interest rate here. Remember that was 4.8853% times $816,000. We're going to come up with an interest expense that we're going to be recognizing on this bond here $39,864. Now that's for the first period here. Now the actual semi annual payment here here was $40,000. That was, we can look at that here, that was the interest that would be paid here semi-annual, 800000 times 10% times 6 of 12 or 6 months out of 12, that's going to give us $40,000. So now to determine our amount that we have to amortize, that's simply the, uh, take our cash payment of 40000 minus our interest expense here, 39864 and we come up with 136. That's the amount of this $16,000 premium for the first period that's going to be amortized down here. Then to determine our next carrying amount, you simply take the 816,000 less the 136. We're going to come up with um, 815,864. So it's critical that we get the proper percentage here for our in effective interest rate so we can amortize it down. So just going through our numbers here again, you can see the 816,000 here times four, that 4.8853% 4 gives us 39,864 here. And then the difference here, the amount that we actually amortize at a premium here was that $40,000 here less the 39,864 gives us 136. And then our new carrying amount here would be uh, the 816,000 here less the 136 here. Uh, the amount that we amortize at a premium gives us 815,864. So we have to amortize it down here to a value of $800,000. So that's how we do that. You can see the, the arithmetic that goes into it here. So then the next period, we're not going to go through it here, but we just take our new carrying amount here of eight. 815,864 times our new our effective interest rate here. That's on that semi-annual basis here. Half of what the uh, actual interest rate is here and you're going to come up with 39,857. Subtract that from the uh, cash payment here. You're going to come up with your new amortized premium here. So you can see you have an increasing amount here on this amortizing your premium. Just subtract that from your uh, beginning carrying value here, you get your new amount um, uh, carrying value here uh, of the bond. And you just keep on using that new carrying value times that effective interest rate, and then do your arithmetic here to determine your, in this case, the premium that's amortized here. Now, if it was a discount, it would be um, the bond would have sold for less than the face value, and we'd go through the same arithmetic here. Okay, so that takes care of setting up our amortization schedule. So now let's go and look at how we record this here on our balance sheet. And it, let's move over here. So we're going to look at recording at the issue date. We're just going to look at for this first year here at the issue date, then that first payment here, and then we're going to look at year end where we have to accrue the interest expense on this bond. Now, again, the bond sells more than the face value, so it sells at a premium. So the first thing we have to do for recording it here, we would just remember we're going to get a, we're going to I sell uh, those $800,000 worth of bonds here on 1-1 one, one, and we're going to receive $816,000 here in cash. So we debit our cash for the amount of $816,000 and then we have to set up our bonds payable on our balance sheet here, credit that here for $800,000 again on 1-1. One, one. That's what we're going to pay off here in the future when these bonds become, if they hold them for the 20 years, that's what we have to pay the bondholders here. Then we have to set up this premium amortization schedule that we and this is going to be work right off the, our amortization schedule that we set up so we got the 800,000 here and then the difference between the 816,000 cash received gives us that $16,000 premium that we have to amortize and then uh, from that here we'll look at how we'll just take those off our table our amortization schedule here and then we have to recognize interest expense here on this bond on their income statement so that's this all is going to come off our amortization schedule. So let's look at let's say seven one here when we make that first payment here to our bond hold. So that's forty thousand here credit cash or reduce cash by that amount here, and then that then we have to set up our divide up our interest expense here and our premium our amortization of our premium here be, uh, between that forty thousand dollars. So our interest expense here that we recognize. 
uh, is going to be reduced here by the amount of that bond premium. So on 7-1 here, remember off our amortization schedule, we amortize 136 here, and our interest expense was 39864 again on 7-1. So what we've done here is we've reduced our interest expense by amount of the amortization. So 39864 plus the 136 gives us that $40,000 semi-annual payment here so we would just do this here and uh, for for each of those periods for each of those semi-annual payments you'd be recognizing and come right off your amortization schedule here now let's just look at the year end here because we're actually not going to pay interest to the um, bondholders until after the 1-1 one, one here but we have to uh, accrue this interest here so um, we have to set up this interest payable on our bond here uh, this is on 1231 uh, at the end of the year here so we credit our interest payable here for forty thousand dollars we didn't not paying it off in cash but we're at this point we just have to set up this uh, semi-annual and that's a semi-annual payment here credit that or, or uh, payments here on one uh, just to make a point here on one one and seven one here but we have to accrue it at the end of the year here in 1231 so we credit our interest payable here for forty thousand dollars here and then again we have to amortize that premium down off our amortization schedule for that second payment here. Uh, we recognize our, uh, we have to amortize it down. It was 143 here. And then interest expense with 39857 So we had this credit amount here, interest payable, which we have to pay off at the first day when on that second payment here, but we have to accrue it here. And then the debit balance here was that premium bond amortization amortizing it down here 143 and that matches or balances with the interest expense here 39,857 which uh, balances with the forty thousand dollars here credit amount here on our payable so the key here what we want to come away with this here is that um, for this we use this for a premium here we have to amortize it down here from we actually start out with eight hundred and sixteen thousand dollars or sixteen thousand dollars here in our premium amortization here are the premium amount and we have to amortize down to a zero amount here and that's all going to come off our amortization schedule here and then uh, just to mean our interest paid here just so you make a note of that that was that a that was that semi-annual interest payment that's just eight hundred thousand times ten percent times a half a year or six to twelve months here all right so this is how we would take care of uh, amortizing it using this effective interest method here so and again Defective interest, you have to use that amortization schedule that you set up here. So you have to set up your amortization schedule here. And just to note here, again, your interest expense, that's what you're going to recognize here on your income statement on the bond here. And that's really reduced uh, from the $40,000 cash payment that we make each or accrue or whatever. Uh, it's reduced here by the amount of the premium that's being amortized on the bond. Okay, so that takes care of... Uh, uh, amortizing this bond using the effective interest method here so I don't know what else to go through here let's just see I guess we covered all the points here and again we have to amortize it 20 years here uh, semi-annual payments so we're going to have se 40 semi-annual payments here 40,000 so our interest expense you can see well our amortization will probably go, will go up uh, a small amount each period here and that means that our interest expense here that we recognize on our income statement will go down here. So remember, bonds payable on a balance sheet, and then we had, because we uh, purchased, uh, we sold it, or uh, the face, sold it, or whatever, purchased it greater than the face value, so you have to set up this premium amortization account here. And then work, uh, set up your amortization schedule, and then remember, you have to use either your calculator or an Excel function when you're trying to determine the effective interest rate.